Hello, welcome to the channel and to the Power Wagon Camper Build. Now, if you're new to the channel, let me tell you that uh, over the last few months, I've been working pretty hard getting this uh, truck behind me here more reliable, safer, a little more fun to drive, and a little more comfortable. And I also bought this new camper behind me and uh, it had some issues when I bought it. So I've been fixing those issues and basically just getting the camper a little more suitable to my needs. Now I've done a bunch of little things recently, both to the uh, truck and the camper, which I think uh, folks might find interesting. So I'm gonna uh, catch you up on all those things. And then uh, after that, I'm gonna be installing an off-road ready uh, mounting solution to mount things like uh, cell phones, GPS devices, or even a GoPro camera. So uh, that's what's in store for today's video. Let's get started. Now, one of my absolute favorite upgrades to this build so far, which was cheap, easy to install, improved usability and even safety, is right above my head here. Let me uh, show you what I'm talking about. Now, if you've been following along with the build, you might recognize this rear view camera here. It's a, a pretty inexpensive unit, but the pretty good output. Now, uh, the problem is, is when I install the camper and put the tailgate down, I can no longer see anything out of that uh, rear view camera. So uh, what I've done is I bought a second unit, which is the same make and model as the first. I've installed it up here on the uh, center of the camper, just above the door on the door frame. Now uh, this camper actually has a bracket here for a rear view camera. It's made by Furion. Now Furion and cameras are really expensive, but uh, the problem is not the expense. The problem is the location for this bracket. I actually uh, temporarily installed a camera up here just to see if I like it. And I really didn't like this uh, solution at all because it's too offset from the center. And when you're uh, backing into a parking spot or a uh, campsite, it really helps to be able to tell exactly where the center of the camper is. And so I really like this uh, solution a lot better. Now to mount it was pretty simple. I just bought some aluminum flat bar from the hardware store and painted it black to match this uh, frame here. And I put some foam backing so it doesn't scratch anything up. And I'm just using existing holes in the frame uh, to mount this. So I didn't have to drill any holes or anything like that. And I'm just using these uh, wing nuts so I can take this on and off easily for uh, winter storage. Now uh, to wire it in, I just bought this little uh, extension cord from Amazon here. So um, this basically just plugs right into the uh, pre-existing wire on the truck. So I basically just unplug the um, uh, backup camera that's currently on the truck and I plug this in uh, right up here with the uh, extension line. So overall, this solution is working out really nicely. I just have to remember that uh, when I take off the camper, I need to really make sure to unplug that camera. Otherwise, it's gonna get ripped out when I pull the truck away. Okay, so we're inside the truck here. This is my head unit. And uh, by default, when I turn on the truck, the video feed I see here on the head unit is coming from the uh, front camera, which is mounted in my uh, front grill. Now, if I put the truck in reverse, now I get the uh, view from behind the camper. And I know it doesn't look great on uh, video here, but uh, in real life, this is actually a really clear picture. These uh, cameras are pretty cheap, but um, put a pretty uh, good picture out. Now, um, the most important thing here is the fact that uh, I can tell where the uh, center of the camper is now. Now, just before our very first camping trip, I was uh, back in the camper moving some stuff around. I ended up getting a giant splinter in my finger to the point that I had to stop and take it out and bandage up my finger. Now, uh, the reason for that splinter has to do with this board right here. This is just a piece of plywood. It's a support board that goes underneath the secondary bed. And uh, just like in most campers, it was shipped in raw form. It wasn't finished or anything, so it was very easy to pick up splinters. Uh, the same can be said for the uh, board that goes above the uh, battery and the uh, water tank, and also the underside of the table. So uh, when I got back from that trip, I took those three boards out and turned them upside down, sanded them all down really good, and uh, put a couple of really thick polyurethane coats on each of them. So uh, now they're all splinter free and uh, feel a little bit better to the hands as well. So uh, that's not exactly an earth shattering idea, but uh, I thought I'd pass it along because it helped me. Now this is just a little uh, step ladder I got off of Amazon. I thought it was worth mentioning because uh, this has been really a great step ladder. Now it's super lightweight and strong, but uh, the stairs are nice and wide as well. So you can actually come off the uh, camper and uh, step forward instead of having to turn yourself around. You do have to use a little caution, but uh, it does work. And uh, also it's just the right height so that it uh, clears the door here. But also the uh, top step is uh, tall enough to where I can uh, reach the roof latches when it's time to uh, raise the roof. 
Now uh, this is great because I can just take one uh, step ladder instead of having uh, stairs which attach to the camper and a separate ladder to uh, gain access to the roof latches. So um, that's why I'm really liking this guy here. And it was a bit expensive, but I think it was worth it. Now, this is a really uh, quick, easy and inexpensive upgrade. I bought these little levels here off of Amazon. They're just a few dollars a piece. I installed one on each corner of the camper to give me an indication of uh, front to back leveling and also one in the rear to give me an indication of left to right leveling. Now uh, this camper, just like most campers, has most of the weight toward the front. So uh, you want to accommodate that whenever you're lifting the camper up. Uh, you don't want to have uh, too much tilt toward the front of the camper. So uh, this has been a really handy and useful upgrade. Now one feature I really like about this camper is that besides having uh, solar panel connections up on the roof, I have uh, really easy access to the battery terminals here. So it makes it easy to measure the battery voltage or also to connect an external uh, solar panel here. Uh, now this is just a uh, low power inexpensive unit I got off of Amazon and I'm not really using it to power the camper. I'm just using it to trickle charge the battery when the camper is not in use. That way uh, when it is time to go camping, the uh, battery is ready to go. So for the next update, I need to take you into the camper. Okay. But I've uh, made the bed here as you can see. Now the bed's not bad, but uh, what I remember from when I slept on it is that um, when I'm laying on my side, I can actually feel the board. This is that support board that I was just talking about under here. I could feel that just a little bit on my shoulder. So what I've done is I've uh, taken some old camping mats. These were just uh, foam mats, not very expensive ones that uh, we bought years ago for camping. And I've uh, stapled it to the uh, back side of that uh, support board there. And then uh, I've done the same thing over here as well. So uh, that really actually helped to thicken up the bed. It's not much, but um, it's just enough so that I can no longer feel this wood through the uh, mattress here. Now under the hood here, I've installed a brand new AGM advanced glass mat battery. Now in my opinion, AGM batteries have a lot of advantages over the standard uh, lead acid batteries. Uh, one of the advantages is the fact that they're more resistant to uh, deep discharging. That makes them a little bit better suited uh, for off-road vehicles where you may be running a winch and even campers. For example, if I forget to uh, disconnect my fridge from the 12 volt DC source and run this guy down, it's not going to damage it as much as you would a standard lead acid battery. AGM batteries also typically have a longer lifespan, so they last quite a bit longer. And uh, they're also more vibration resistant. So again, a little more suited for an off-road vehicle. In my opinion, really the only disadvantage to having an AGM battery is the cost. But uh, in my case, I actually found a really good deal on Amazon. I bought this battery shipped free to my home without any core charge for less than I could buy a, a brand new standard lead acid battery here locally. Uh, it happens to be made by AC Delco, so I hope my Ram truck doesn't mind having a General Motors supplier in it, but uh, otherwise I think this battery is working out pretty well. Now the battery that was in here was still capable of starting the truck, but uh, it was a few years old and I'm sure it had been subject to a lot of vibration in the uh, previous life of this uh, old fire truck. So uh, I just thought that I would go ahead and eliminate a potential source of problems so that uh, when I'm out in the middle of the woods I don't have to worry about my battery starting the truck. Now uh, back behind the uh, front seats here is another very uh, inexpensive and uh, very worthwhile upgrade. Now uh, these are little uh, seat backs again that I bought from uh, Amazon. They didn't cost much, but uh, these really improve the uh, storage space back here. I don't have them fully populated, but uh, they're pretty handy. There's a nice little uh, pouch here and uh, a secondary pouch here. And there's uh, these Molly straps and uh, some storage down here as well. Now. Um, I'm sure I'll fill these up over time. I don't have a lot of stuff in them right now, but uh, definitely you can probably see that uh, they're gonna be pretty useful, especially in an off-road or camping application. So this is a uh, base model Ram 2500 pickup with the Power Wagon package. And what that means is that I have a lot of uh, excellent off-road features, but not a lot of creature comforts on this truck. Now, uh, I don't need all the creature comforts, but it is nice to uh, have a few upgrades here and there. And in previous videos, I showed how to install uh, rear vents for the passengers in the back seat. And I've also upgraded the uh, stereo head unit recently. So uh, there's one more upgrade, which is uh, really cheap and easy to do. So uh, let me show you that now. Now remove the glove box and and uh, just behind the glove box is the uh, AC vent system. Now on the base model truck, this uh, area here is, is uh, usually covered just by a solid piece of plastic, but I've cut that plastic out along the, uh, the line that you see here, and I've installed this uh, cabin air filter. Now uh, I bought this as a kit, 
It came with this uh, this door here. Uh, together with the filter and door, it was only about $20. And this is just a standard uh, part number. This is the same filter that comes in uh, some of the other RAM packages that's uh, not included with the base model. Now this is a pretty easy install. I just used a, uh, a couple of hand tools. I used this little saw here and uh, this razor knife. Now it probably uh, would have been easier to use a Dremel tool, probably faster, but uh, these hand tools work just fine. So the main reason I did this uh, filter install is the fact that in its previous life, this truck was exposed to some uh, really dusty road conditions. And I didn't want to continue to uh, accumulate dust onto the AC evaporator and potentially shorten its lifespan. So I think this was some pretty uh, cheap insurance and it wasn't very uh, difficult to do. Uh, the only other thing I would add is that uh, if you decide to cut that plastic piece out, you have to be really careful not to drop any plastic down because uh, just underneath that filter sits the uh, AC fan and you don't want to leave any plastic into the fan or otherwise it's going to damage it. Now if you buy an old emergency vehicle like I did, it may come with some extra electrical equipment, uh, supporting equipment which uh, would control sirens and flashing lights and things like that. Now in my case, the uh, control electronics for that stuff have been largely removed, but what was left were a few switches, a bunch of uh, relays and connection points, and uh, all the cables that you see here. Now I wasn't initially going to remove all these cables, I didn't have an immediate reason to do so, but it seems like they were always in the way every time I did an upgrade to the truck. And uh, recently I was under the truck and I found that one of these giant connectors here had actually been rubbing against my drive shaft and put a little notch in it. So I knew it was time to uh, get rid of all this stuff before I had a major issue. Now uh, it took me a few hours to get rid of all this stuff and I got a lot of dirt dropped in my eyes in the process because these cables actually ran from the very rear of the vehicle all the way to the front and all throughout. So it was quite a chore to uh, get rid of all this stuff. But uh, somehow I was able to cut all the right cables without cutting into the uh, vehicle electrical system. And um, I even found something interesting. Now when I bought this truck, I was getting uh, no response from the horn switch inside the steering wheel. So I started looking around and it turns out this truck has uh, two horn modules just behind the grill here. And only one of those two modules was uh, connected. So I took the connector off, cleaned it up and tightened the pins and uh, that enabled one of the two horns. But I couldn't find the connector for the second horn until I started uh, removing those cables. And uh, in the process, I found the connector to the second horn had been uh, taped up and, and tied out of the way. So I assumed that that second horn was being used along with the uh, siren as part of the emergency vehicle set up here on this truck. And uh, once I cleaned those pins and tightened them up a bit and connected that second horn, it seems to fix the problem. So uh, now this sounds a little bit more like a full-size truck and a little bit less like a classic Volkswagen. Okay, so I'm getting ready to install a mounting system that allow me to mount my uh, cell phone or my uh, Garmin GPS into the power wagon. So what I'm gonna be using are these RAM mounts here. These are really high quality pieces of equipment. Uh, they're made in the USA. I see more and more people using these now. I've been using these since about 2007 or 2008. Actually, I have a set installed on my uh, ATVs and also a set in uh, each Jeep. So they're definitely off-road rated. These guys have really been through a lot of uh, really tough terrain without failure. So I have a lot of uh, confidence in these and I'm gonna be installing a set uh, now in the uh, power wagon. And what this consists of is, uh, this is just a generic holder for the cell phone. They make a lot of different holders. In fact, uh, this one here is specific to this particular uh, Garmin uh, GPS. But on the back side, you'll see this little one inch ball. And then you also have a, a little mounting arm here. There are different sizes of these mounting arms and uh, these are actually made out of aluminum, as are the balls, uh, or at least the ball base. They also make plastic versions of the, uh, the, the ball base. But uh, I, I like the aluminum. I know that these are really uh, heavy duty and, and durable. So the way these work is basically you have a, a two ball system. So you have one ball mounted to the truck somewhere or somewhere on your dash. And then uh, this arm will mount to that ball. And then on the other side, you'll, you'll have your uh, cell phone mount or GPS mount. So uh, it's a pretty simple system. It works really well. And of course, because the, you have uh, two balls, this thing has a, a lot of uh, possibilities for uh, different locations. So uh, anyway, I really like these uh, RAM mounts. They're a little bit expensive, but I think you get what you pay for. So I've taken this here off. This is the um, centerpiece in the uh, center dash of the uh, power wagon. So I'm gonna mount a ball onto this, uh, this piece here. But um, in case I decide to sell the power wagon later, I don't wanna drill uh, holes which are visible. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna be taking out this little uh, rubber piece and I'm going to uh, use one, one existing hole here 
to install one of these uh, these balls. So uh, I had to shave off each end of this uh, this ball here, or each side I should say, to make it a little bit more narrow so that uh, it fits in this little tray. And what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be using, uh, like I said, one of the existing holes here. I need to make a, a second hole here and I just attach this with a couple of bolts. But I don't wanna drill into this piece here. This is the original little rubber piece. I wanna keep this. So um, what I have instead is I have this, uh, this really thin rubber. I'm just gonna cut it to size so that uh, the same uh, size and shape as this guy here. And then I'll drill into it and then I'll uh, use that rubber inside of this little tray uh, and that'll have the holes in it. So uh, if I ever go to sell the truck, I'll just remove that, uh, that rubber tray and uh, go back with the original one. And I'll take the ball out and then you'll never be able to see that I had to drill a hole in this little tray. So that's the idea and uh, that's what I'm working on now. Okay, so uh, that's the finished product. I have the uh, the ball bolted in. There's the uh, the nuts on the back side, and then um, this will fit into the dash. Now it gets screwed into the dash with a couple little screws. The screws go through these little screw holes here, so I can just lift up this uh, rubber mat here to uh, screw this piece back into the dash on uh, on each side there, and then um, and this will fit onto the ball, loosen up a little bit. And like I said, once you tighten this guy down here, it doesn't move. It's gonna be really, really in place. And of course you can put it just about in any direction you want. So um, yeah, just need to install this guy back into the truck and uh, we're good to go. Okay, so I got the center dash piece back in the truck and the ball is uh, installed and it is really on there that's not going to move anywhere so I'm pretty happy with that so uh, the way this works is I just uh, attach the arm and uh, put this where I want it and give this guy a little turn get it nice and tight and once it's tight it's not going to go anywhere so this is really uh, a nice setup here and then uh, you can put your cell phone in like that and uh, it doesn't look like it's uh, going to hold really well, but it, it does. And this is not going to go anywhere. It's definitely not going to let go of the cell phone. And by the way, there are different uh, little finger mounts you can use. There's a whole multitude of uh, different setups you can uh, use on these RAM mounts. Uh, you can move these fingers up here or down here. I have them so that um, you know I have access to the, uh, the buttons up here on my phone. But uh, you could put them you know, up here and uh, down there. Likewise, the uh, the ball can be mounted in different locations. So if I need to adjust this up, for example, I can just mount the ball down here on the bottom. Right now it's mounted to the center. I can mount it on the bottom and that would adjust this up or I can mount it on the top and adjust this whole piece down. And um, yeah, like I said, these little fingers can be moved and there's different styles of fingers, but um, I've used these a lot uh, before. So I know these work and uh, it's easy enough just to slide it in and uh, Yep, it's there. It's not going to go anywhere. You can pull it down. There's also a little uh, base that uh, can fit in here to offer sort of a support on the bottom side. But I found I don't really need it. Um, so it just kind of gets in the way, so I took it off. So yeah, that's the cell phone mount. And um, of course I can mount it uh, vertically. Or if I just loosen that, I can turn this around, mount it horizontally. And then... Uh, I can just as easily switch over to my uh, GPS mount. So that's a great location there. That's a lot better than having it up on the windshield or something like that. It's right at my uh, fingertips. 
and I can view it a lot better because it's uh, really close to me. So if I need this GPS, it's going to go there. And um, likewise, it's a pretty good place for my phone as well. So, okay, I think that job is done. And up here on my windshield is another mounting solution from Ram Mounts. Now, obviously this was a very easy install because it just mounts to the glass through suction. And I was really surprised just how strong that suction is. And yet it's uh, easy on, easy off just by flipping this little lever here. Now, the idea with this is to allow me to record on video my journeys through the uh, windshield. Now, I could mount a, a cell phone for uh, recording video, but uh, I opted to buy a, another little arm here and a uh, mounting provision for the GoPro camera that I currently am recording this on. Well, that's all I have for today's video. Hopefully you found some of those upgrades interesting or informative. Now, if you have been following along with the channel, you'll know that I've been preparing the truck to do some off-road trips. Now, uh, it's not quite ready to go off-roading just yet. There are a few finishing touches I need to do before I can safely and effectively take it off-road. And that's what the next video will be focused on. Now, hopefully if everything goes right, the following video, I'll uh, be recording my first off-road trip with the uh, truck and camper combo. And the idea there is to kind of shake things out and test out the suspension and other systems and have a little bit of fun with it as well. So if you're interested in seeing those things, you might want to subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notifications. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.